Hi, my name is Megan Janetsky. I'm a freelance journalist based in Colombia covering the Venezuelan immigration crisis. And usually you'll find me on the other side of the camera, but today I'm talking to you a little bit about my Pulitzer Center project, Stateless in Colombia, where I spent time on the Colombia and Venezuela border inside hospitals talking to pregnant women about an emerging citizenship crisis that was happening there. So around the end of 2015, beginning of 2016, you see Venezuela start to spiral into this economic and political crisis, and that spurred on things like hyperinflation, um, starvation, mass violence, and a mass migration of over 4 million people from the country. And the biggest receiver of those migrants has been Colombia, which has received 1.4 million people. Around the beginning of 2019, you start to see a more vulnerable population arriving to the doors of the country. And that includes pregnant women who wanted to give birth in Colombia because of the crippled medical system there and the rising rates of infant and maternal mortality. But because of Colombia's birthright citizenship laws, you also saw another rising crisis, and that was statelessness. And statelessness is when a country does not provide birthright citizenship to babies born in the country by foreigners. For instance, two Venezuelan parents will come to Colombia and they won't be able to access uh, Colombia's nationality because of its birthright citizenship laws, nor can they, their child access Venezuela's nationality because they can't return due to the situation and the lack of documentation in the country as it stands. So their babies are born stateless. And approximately 15 million people worldwide are stateless. And these stateless people often lack access to basic human rights like education, medical services, freedom of movement, and later down the line, things like voting. Colombia saw the rise of 24,000 stateless babies. Venezuelan parents would migrate to Colombia the mother would give birth to the baby and they would think that either their baby was Colombian or Venezuelan. Others knew but figured statelessness was a better alternative than to potentially dying in Venezuela's crippled medical system. So that's where we were in August when the Colombian government announced that they were going to nationalize 24,000 of these babies. and continue to provide nationality to the babies of Venezuelan migrants born in Colombia for the coming two years as the crisis continues. But the problem is that experts say this is only a band-aid to a larger issue. So many of the women that have stateless children still don't know that their child is stateless due to lack of information passed to these people. And millions of other migrants don't stay in Colombia. They pass through to other countries. They go to Ecuador, they go to Peru, and they go to Chile. And if you have a stateless child, in order to access that nationality, you have to return back to Colombia, according to one uh, lawyer who's been following the situation. And that journey is completely impossible for many Venezuelan migrants. I've talked to so many when I was reporting in Peru, for instance, that didn't even have the money to have housing. Many were living on the street or in shelters and could barely feed themselves. Finally, this decree does not change the birthright citizenship rules in Colombia's constitution. So it's only temporary and only applies to Venezuelans. So if you have another mass migration from a place like Brazil, like Cuba, or if this continues past the two years in Venezuela, you may see a rise of another stateless population in Colombia. But for now, the major question is what becomes of these children that were born into the citizenship pandemonium, especially as Colombia struggles to take on this massive wave of migration from its neighboring country of Venezuela.